Like it or not, we are directly or indirectly responsible for those we elect to lead us as a nation. Some will say it's the politicians from the northern part of the country that has brought this on us. Those in the north would also blame another section of the country for the cycle of bad leadership that has plagued Nigeria since it became one entity in 1914. Despite the amalgamation, tribal rivalry has remained in the DNA of Nigeria till this moment. After gaining independence from British rule in 1960 and becoming a republic in 1963, Nigeria with an estimated population of about 200 million people has celebrated 21 years of returning to democratic rule on what is now known as Inauguration Day. This is coming two years after the government announced that every May 29 will now be Inauguration Day and June 12 will be recognized as Democracy Day. Before now, May 29 accommodated both the Inauguration Day and Democracy Day to mark the day the military handed over power to an elected civilian government in 1999. It also marked the beginning of the longest continuous civilian rule in Nigeria. June 12, on the other end, was recognized as the day of the freest and fairest election held in Nigeria, an election that was later annulled in 1993 by the military junta of General Ibrahim Babangida. In all of this, one question comes to mind. Has Nigeria made the right choice of leaders since returning to democracy? From 1999 till date, Nigeria has had four democratically elected presidents. Olusha Gon Basajo 1999-2007, Leitu Maru Musa Yaradua 2007 2007-2010, to before his vice, Goodluck Jonathan, took over after his demise in 2010. Jonathan was in power till May 2015 when he lost a second term bid to Muhammad Buhari, who was re elected for a second term in 2019 and remains in power. 21 years of democracy and four presidents after. What has Nigeria got to show? Nigeria has a lot of positives to point, and they include an abundance of natural resources, good climatic conditions, rich and diverse cultures, massive rainforest, immeasurable and active manpower, unbelievable creative and intellectual talent, amongst others. But Africa's biggest democracy by population carries the burden of bad leadership and poor management of its resources. That burden of mismanagement is best exemplified in the lack of infrastructure. Nigeria spent $5.9 billion per year on federal infrastructure, equivalent to about 5% of its GDP. Clearly, the sum spent annually by successive administrations from 1999 to the date on capital projects is significantly short of the sum needed to tackle Nigeria's infrastructure problems. Recently, the Minister of Finance, Zainab Ahmed, stated that Nigeria needs an estimated 36 trillion naira annually for the next 30 years to solve the infrastructure deficit. Massive corruption and lack of willpower to bring those who have plundered the nation's resources to book has thrown the country into untold hardship and huge debt. According to Transparency International, Nigeria ranks 144 out of 180 countries in its 2018 Corruption Perception Index. President Mohamed Buhari launched an anti-corruption drive as one of his policies after returning to power in May 2015. Six years later, corruption remains one of the country's biggest challenges. Although supporters of the president claim he has kept the level of graft low, critics think otherwise. How about security? Since the year 2000 till date, 
Nigeria has been facing one security challenge or another. From the oil theft situation in the southeast and the south south parts of the country to kidnappings and armed robberies in the southwest, the country has never been in want of insecurity. In 2009, the northeast of Nigeria was hit by a massive security challenge when a group of terrorists called Boko Haram struck and killed thousands of people while forcing more than 2 million out of their homes. Today, the violence has spread to Chad and Cameroon, nations bordering Nigeria. This security challenge can also be pinned to bad leadership. Kidnappings, banditry, farmers' elders' clashes have also become a mainstay in the country with countless lives lost in the last six years to needless bloodletting. In all of this, how has the country gained economically? Let's do a little analysis of the Nigerian economy at this point. To be candid, Nigeria's GDP boomed after the return to civilian rule in 1999. According to World Bank data, despite its vast oil wealth, Nigeria's GDP was a mere $59 billion prior to 1999, but that figure skyrocketed to $375 billion by the end of 2016. The country is still heavily reliant on crude oil as its main earner. Oil represents more than 80% of total export revenue. When the global oil price crashed towards the end of 2016, Nigeria went into its first recession in 25 years. It was reported at that time that over 90 million Nigerians were living in extreme poverty. In 2019, Nigeria overtook India, a country of 1.3 billion people, to become home to the most extremely impoverished people in the world. This again can be blamed on bad leadership. In the area of job creation, Nigeria has struggled with providing jobs for its growing population despite the gains made after the privatization of the telecom sector in 2000 and banking revolution of 2004 and 2009. These two sectors have impacted positively on the country and have sprung other subsectors now dominated by young entrepreneurs in tech, music, movies, fashion and the country's large informal sector. Despite those gains, the country's unemployment rate has refused to slow despite the claims of the Buhari administration that it has invested billions of naira in agriculture and provided jobs for millions through this singular sector. Unemployment statistics from the Nigeria Employers Consultative Association, however, say otherwise. The employers body revealed months back that the rate of unemployment may rise to 33.5% in 2020 from a previous 23.1% in 2018. Now comes the COVID-19 pandemic that has disrupted life the world over. In February, the WHO declared the coronavirus a pandemic, forcing many nations to go on lockdown. If developed nations can be brought to their knees, one can only imagine the impact the pandemic has had on Nigeria's monolithic and fragile economy. The deadly disease which has killed thousands around the world and crippled every fragile sector has hit the country badly as oil price took a massive plunge and forced oil producing nations to sell at almost next to nothing at the peak of the pandemic. Nigeria at the moment has three oil savings funds. The Sovereign Wealth Fund with $1.5 billion, the Excessive Crude Account with $2.3 billion and the Stabilization Fund with 29.02 billion naira. In the last 40 years of oil production, it has extracted about 31 billion barrel of its oil reserves. However, from 1980 to 2015, the country exported crude oil worth about $1.09 trillion and saved only $3.9 billion as of June 2017. The Nigerian Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative set by December 2006, after the Paris Club payment, Nigeria's external debt was $3.5 billion. Years of lower oil prices, resource stealing and wasting, and defense of the exchange rate has seen the external debt creep back up. 
between the start of 2015 and December 2020. Nigeria's external debt profile rose from $9.7 billion to $27 billion. With all the challenges highlighted, as a result of bad leadership, it is pertinent to then ask the following questions. Can democracy, as it is being practiced in Nigeria today, take the country out of the current economic doldrums? Does Nigeria need to develop the style of government that suits its norms and culture? Should the country return to the days of regional government when all federating units developed at their own pace? Will peace and harmony return to the country if justice is meted out without fear or favor? Let's have your thoughts in comments below. Happy Democracy Day, Nigeria.